Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 206. My guest today is the incredible Dara O'Farrell. Not only is he one of the forefathers of voice acting in video games, who worked at LucasArts for almost 20 years, he's also a delightful man and a blast to hang out with. In this episode, we talk about him originally being from Ireland, moving to Los Angeles, getting a job as a runner at an animation company, his first time directing, bluffing his way into a job at LucasArts, working on Knights of the Old Republic, my personal favorite video game. He gives great advice for upcoming directors, and we talk about so much more! Dara is fantastic, and I'm so excited for you all to get to know him. So, without further ado, let's do this, friends! Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 206, with Dara O'Farrell. Theme song time! <laughs> Experts are people that just learn to wing it and you can't tell anymore. That's right. How's your day going, man? Not too bad. Not too bad. I uh, Kids are out of school, so nice nice uh, kind of lazy start to the day and dropped my son off at one of his soccer practices this morning. And then I did uh, an hour and 15 minutes on the bike trainer. Ooh. And here we are. There you <laughs> go. Do you do you like being busy? Are you the kind of like, are you good with free time? I'm terrible. I'm either. No, I'm I'm good with free time. I can oh, yeah. I can oh yeah I can. What's, uh, what's the key? Do you just have? Do you get to a point where you're so tired you need it? And you're like, hmm. No, I just I I, I like I like pondering over things that take you know soak up a lot of time. Like I I a good example. Um, I'm a avid cyclist and yeah. used to used to be a bike racer when I was a teenager. So when it comes to the Tour de France or yeah. you know whatever other cycling you know bike races are going on. I'll uh, stick them on and, you know, the, the TV coverage is, you know, they'll have like three, four hours of TV coverage. So I'll sure. just like <laughs> turn it on and I'll just kind of putter around the house and check in and see where they are in the stage and continue doing whatever it is I'm doing and, you know, check back in as, as you know, the last hour I'll sort of watch, you know, the, the important the, the, part, the, the important <laughs> part. And, you know, but if I have free time, I'm, you know, I run, I bike, I am a avid uh soccer fan as well so there's always games on and, and yeah uh and and i'm a gamer so you know there's there's i can soak up free time no problem at all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the key the thing is does that count as free time because you're working and like you're do, like for you video games is basically homework and then you've also got cycling i don't know if i'd call cycling free time dara I mean, uh, no, it's, it, it's, it's clear physical it's, it, yeah but it clears the mind you know oh that's so, a good point it's, you it's, like can uh, get into that autopilot sort of yeah. like yeah okay Ex exactly it's it, it it's hard to it's one of those things when you're on the bike it's actually hard to hard to uh think too hard because you're you're you know you're just sure. focused on on you know what's coming up you know what climb you're you're about to hit or descent or what car you need to avoid sure <laughs> you know, all, of the, all of those things Right. So, it's mental free time that's what it is it is yeah definitely i respect that have you ever seen the tour de france in person Happens. No, I, I, one of these days, you know, rather than seeing it in person, because, you know, you, you stand on the side of the road and they're sure you know, they're gone <laughs> and, unless you're, unless you're on that last climb of the day, uh, you know, it, you know, they're past you in a, in a flash. Um, I would, I would rather go over there and ride the climbs, you know, yeah. and, and do that. So that's, that's kind of a bucket list, uh, a bucket list thing to do. So one of these days I'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll go to France and I'll bring the bike. Why not? That's a good bucket list item. Yeah, why not? Now, so I have friends named Kieran Byrne. I have friends named Mick Melanthi. But Dara O'Farrell may be the most Irish name I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it, uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Dublin, although my, my uh, accent sense. is, yeah, my accent is um, sort of worn thin. It's it's when I was 12, I moved to Scotland. Oh. And that changed my accent and and then when i was 19 i moved to la and and um it, it just became it just became this kind of light lilt there's there's little tells like i'll say tomato 
uh, rather than yeah. tomato or uh, garage or rather than garage. That'll do it. You know, if I'm with the kids, I'll reference uh, their mother as mum, you know, as opposed as opposed to mom. So yeah, there's 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 some tells uh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. But do you go by da? No, just Dara. Okay, yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's in there. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> Where where's home? The Bay Area. I'm I'm uh, in. You know, I was I moved to LA in 1990, and then in '95, uh, I moved up to the Bay Area, and uh, it's one of those things. My wife is from the Bay Area, so it's gotcha. It's, it's home, and you know, if I need to go to LA, I just you know, it's right there. It's right there. It's an hour, it's an hour away on the plane, mm-hmm. um, or it's you know six hours in the car, you know. So whatever, whatever's needed. Just, sure. Uh, head down and, and then so, so and then so so much stuff is done over zoom today so it's you know it, it leveled the playing field that it, it made the whole world on the same plane yeah yeah so have you been back to ireland oh yeah like we we um last time we, we well we were there just before covid hit uh sure. we were we because we, my mother and my sister are still still in ireland my dad lives in boston so we decided we were going to go to Portugal for uh, vacation, and so we stopped off in in Dublin and, and kind of you know did the did the whole family thing and and we're there for a week uh, and then hopped on the plane went to Portugal and, and yeah so so we, we we haven't since since COVID we haven't been back but sure fam- family has come out here so you know we're we're gonna try and figure something out here soon I think so okay do, okay do it again yeah what part of Scotland did you move to Edinburgh. So ah, I was in, nice. yeah, yeah, I was in, which is, yeah, if, any, if you haven't been to Edinburgh, it's an amazing city. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. So yeah, I was in Edinburgh, um, basically in high school. So, well, in, in, by American terms, sort of middle school and high school. Sure. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a piece of my heart still in Ireland. Yeah. I went in, I went in 2016 and did like the full thing. I was like, I want to experience this place. Did like Dublin all the way to Port McGee, to Galway, to... Donegal to Belfast back to Dublin. Nice. And it just a, it's it's there. It's, it's there's something about it. it. Like Tollymore Forest National Park is my favorite place on the planet. Nice. I'm like it, it's like going to a different world and just there's something about Ireland. I I have a I have a, I have a piece of my heart still there. Did you have a pint? Oh, did I have a pint, Dara? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I had several. <laughs> good, good for you. It's like Guinness is one of those things where it doesn't uh it doesn't travel outside it doesn't. In, in in the same way. Like if it's in yeah. Ireland, I don't know what it is, but but um, the best way I can explain it to somebody is if you have a pint of Guinness in, in Ireland, as it's put down in front of you, you can draw a little smiley face in the foam at the top and you can yeah. drink it. And, and that foam will go all the way down to the bottom of the pint glass and you'll still see the smiley face. Ooh. You try to, you try doing that anywhere outside of Ireland and that smiley face is gone halfway through the... You know, yeah. So is the one on my heart. It's a <laughs> it's a different drink, dude. Because I remember I'd had Guinness before, and I was like, yeah, it's it's good. I enjoy it. But then I had a pint at like the Guinness Brewery on that like Sky Bar in the middle of Dublin, where you're like overlooking the whole city. And I was like, this tastes totally different. I don't know it maybe because the the mountain water is like right there, and you're like, here, enjoy. But it's yeah. you know, it's like you said, it's hard to explain for anyone that yeah, hasn't right. had it there. It's like it's so different. So different, yeah, yeah. Well, good. That's that's. Uh, you, it sounds like you had a good time, and uh, oh yeah, I, I always like to hear that. So it's good. I tried to do it correctly. We landed at like seven a.m., and by eleven thirty a.m., I was drunk at the brewery. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the rite of passage immediately. Yeah, and it yeah. went well. It went well, but I haven't been to Scotland yet. That's like the I went everywhere else because then we did the the ferry into Hollyhead. And then yep. took a train from Chester into London and was in London for five days, just in time for Brexit. So oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see an active collapse of an economy. But I didn't make it to Scotland yet. It's how does it compare? Like because um, they're, they're different. They're very different, but also, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the Scotland's, you know, it's a very proud country. Um, uh-huh. you know, that the a lot of the unlike in Ireland, like a lot of, a lot of the sort of the castles are still intact. Um, so as you kind of move your way around the country, you know, the, the, there's a, there's a lot of really interesting uh, places to see and go. Uh, Edinburgh is a great art town. Um, yeah. 
you know, it has it has the um the, the arts festival, yeah, it has that, that that every year and and just just lots of good stuff. Um, but for, for me, Edinburgh, like, like the, just architecturally, it's it's just fascinating. Like it, it it you know, there's the old town, which is it looks like something out of Harry Potter. And, yeah. Um, for for obvious reasons, because that's yeah. where, where she, <laughs> Checks she's out. inspired. Yeah. Um, and but then there's the new town, and I, I forget that. I think the new town was built in like 1750 or something. I forget what it is, but but that in and of itself is is really yeah. old, older than our country. Um, but like one one is one is very much kind of like the new town is very much gridded, um, uh-huh. like like a lot of modern cities, and much easier to navigate your way around. Whereas the old town, it's all you know, twisty. Turny, you know, cobblestone streets and, and the cracked uh, windshield of a map. Yeah, so it's it's just it's a, it's it's just a, a cool town to 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 go and check out, and just you know, there's lots of history there, and lots of places to go. So um, yeah, I definitely for people if they're if they're going over to that part of the world and they can, you know, get Scotland, you know, on the list for sure, and 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 of course Ireland, and and you know, yeah. London, <laughs> I, I love London. London's like my favorite city. It's so uh, cool. It's so great. I just love it. So uh, and as as a as an avid football fan. Oh yeah, what's your team? Arsenal. Ooh. So okay. Yeah. So I've been been a by choice. Well, so when, when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, in the seventies, um, half the Arsenal team was Irish. So there were, there were uh, these great, great old, you know, Irish players like Liam Brady and David O'Leary and Frank Stapleton. And, and, uh, so as a kid growing up, I just was attracted to Arsenal because the, yeah. the, you know, there were a lot of Irish guys on the team and, and, um, it's just ever since I was probably seven, I've been an Arsenal fan. And so it's been a while since I've been to any of the games, but I used to always try and coordinate my, uh, my work with, nice you know matches so i could go to highbury which was the old stadium and and then the the emirates stadium which is the newer one trying you know get a few games in while i'm there so there you go i think we're we're, we're i think we're gonna maybe you know this this holiday season see if maybe we can go over there on a little family trip and you know see a game or two so we'll see i'll have to, I have to look into that so i respect the commitment yeah it was it was it was a good season for arsenal up until the very end when they fell away but they were they were leading for the longest time and then the juggernaut that is manchester city just yeah. sucked, them, sucked them in and, <laughs> and like, like 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 a tractor beam just pulled, yeah. pulled them in and, and pipped them at the line so oh well it's okay you know, that's the drama of football right that's that, that's it that's that yeah. back and forth of always lifetime just entertainment highs totally. and lows yeah yeah i love it did you play growing up no i i uh, i had to play rugby uh so okay. I did, did rugby uh not you know a huge i mean i'll watch rugby once in a while but i don't I don't love it the way i do i love football sure. and so but then i was always more you know endurance sports so it was you know yeah you know running and and you know bike racing and you know now i i haven't done one since before covid but i'll do like half Ironman events and, yeah. um, you know, so, but yeah, no, never, never played. My son and daughter play, uh, my daughter just started playing again after, after a little hiatus, but, uh, my son has always been a, been a hardcore, uh, player. So cool. it's, it's, it's a big part of our family and our, and our weekends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of stuff were you into growing up? Mm. Um, you know, I was always a gamer and, yeah. um, I, you know, started out with a, an Atari, and, nice. um, had a Commodore 64 and, and, you know, played, there was an old game called elite, uh, which was a, like a vector graphic space bearing, uh, game. And I used to always pretend I was, you know, Han Solo flying the fault, the millennium Falcon. So yeah, I, I, I was just always a gamer and, and, and a bike rider. And, and, I, you know, there was a period of time in my teenage years where I sort of stopped playing games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after I'd moved to Los Angeles, I was, uh, a runner for an animation company. And I oh, remember cool. walk, I was walking by, a uh, like an egghead software and I, and I saw, uh, like an image for for um dark it was either dark forces or x-wing or both i can't i can't i can't quite remember which which was but i remember looking at the box and going it looks just like a movie yeah <laughs> by, Back then. Not, by, you know not by today's standards but but in in my mind you know as a 19 20 year old however old i was at the time i was just like oh my god and so then i kind of so you know slowly started getting back into gaming and uh you know it's just kind of 
you know kept going to today so it's 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 a it's a it's a job and it's a fun you know fun pastime that's cool so what what brought you to la then because that is not close to scotland at all <laughs> no so much so uh as a kid i always at the time i was like oh, i want to get into the film business because my my father was a uh a film director mostly oh, com- he did commercials and and documentaries That's he was cool. very very much into doing documentaries um uh and i think the the commercials just kind of paid for you know the family and the documentaries um and, yeah so um <laughs> so it was just one of those things where i was I always wanted to kind of get into entertainment yeah and um you know, the, the number of courses coming out of high school or, you know, back in, you know, Ireland or, or England or, you know, Scotland were, were really limited. Um, and so I was doing a kind of a media, a more general media course. And um, okay. after a, a sort of a semester, I was like, I was just talking to my dad and I was like, yeah, I'm not really, you know, learning anything because it's 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 not really relevant to what I want to do and and uh you know having spent years on you know film sets or, or wherever dad was working just it just I was just you know I, I just picked up things over the years and so he was like why don't you go to LA and and I was like oh my god what and and he's like well if it doesn't work out you can always come back what a dad so I was like oh, okay uh so yeah so I I you know uh I moved to LA had a few um phone numbers uh you know people that my dad had known to call you know one was a a guy called peter keith who um was in he was an executive producer in animation and another Mm -hmm. one was was a woman called claire simpson who was a academy award-winning film editor and she she won won her her academy award for platoon dude and so the first week i landed i thought i'm gonna just pound the, the, the pavement and uh, I, I put on a, a, a wool suit. I think it was like 95 <laughs> degrees and I just started walking down Santa Monica Boulevard. And if I saw, you know, something production company, I'd walk in and knock on the door. <laughs> so <laughs> so m- most of those conversations, um, you know, are, are like, you know, cause I'd be talking to somebody at the front desk and they'd be like, Oh, you know, get lost. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> your wool suit. <laughs> and there was, there, there was one, one production company. I don't, I wish I could remember who, who they were cause they, they were really gracious, but I, I was talking to the, the woman at the, at the front desk and she's like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, we don't have anything. And I turned to walk away. And she's like, hold on a second. And, and I stopped and she gets on the phone and she's like, yeah, I've got this guy. He's, you know, he's from Ireland. He's pounding on the street. You know, he's just looking for <laughs> advice. He's in a suit. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I, so these two guys who were, I don't know what they were. They were, they, they had their own production company. They were sitting in their conference room uh, in Hawaiian shirts, eating lunch. And <laughs> they, they, I, I chatted with them for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And they just, I, I don't remember what advice they gave me. But they, <laughs> they were nice enough to talk to me. And so, but anyway, I, I ended up becoming a runner for the, the animation company and, uh, or, or, or at least the, 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 the company that did all the, the pre and post production for the, for the animation company. Sure. Um, and they offered me a job and it was making like 300 bucks a week. Nice. I was, bro- I was broke, but uh, <laughs> I had I accepted that job, and then like a day later, uh, Claire Simpson called me, and she was going to New York to um, start working on sh- uh, a Sean Penn movie called State of Grace, which was about a bunch Sweet. of I- Irish mobsters in in New York. What are the odds? And and I was it was one of those things where I really wanted to do that, but it was too big a risk because I just got an apartment and I just gotten this job as a runner mm-hmm. and to, to kind of to kind of basically pack up and go to new york for 10 weeks was just like i, I just couldn't my brain couldn't get around that sure so i ended up becoming a runner uh for the animation company and it was actually a great opportunity because i it was a company was called, called vitello uh productions and and paul vitello who was my my first boss it, this was hit, a new company for him he, he'd had a previous 
a production company that he'd shut and de- shut down. I was his first employee at his new new place. Get it. And um, we were working for uh, Peter Keefe's um, Zodiac Entertainment, which was making a game or, or a, a game, a, a cartoon show called uh, Widget the World Watcher. And then they had Mr. Bogus, which was kind of a claymation um, yeah. and regular cell animation show. So I was a runner, uh, just running tapes around, film around, doing whatever needed to be done for, you know, all those years. And... Um, um, I remember my first sort of session where I was kind of, I mean, not, not my first session, but the first session where, where I was in the room with the actors alone, oh. we were, we were set up to record and there were two directors where there was Paul. And then there was, um, uh, another fellow who was, was from the animation company and the, the unnamed guy was hung over. And so he wasn't showing up <laughs> and Paul, Paul. <laughs> Paul was sick and, and, and Paul, so Paul was sick. He just assumed the other guy was going to be there. And so I'm sitting there. There's like Tress McNeil, uh, oh. Jim Cummings, Cam Clark, Pat Frey. Like it was like it was like a who's who of, of of like you the know the cartoon or, Avengers. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Tress was like, "Come on, Dara, let's just roll this shit. Let's just do it." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "All right, let's do it." And I, you know, I didn't need to give any direction because they just knew exactly what to do. But I just sort of sat there and and with the engineer and took notes and circle takes and and uh, you know. Dude let it run until until paul showed up and and uh that was kind of my first uh you know my first kind of experience doing that but um Ooh. you know that job you know basically set me up for the the next adventure which was you know lucas arts and yeah. um that was that was actually kind of a a funny one because my uh, girlfriend at the time, um, she, who's sadly no longer with us, uh, she oh, called. She called me and said, "Don't interrupt me and tell me why you can't do this job." And <laughs> um, there you go. And uh, she read out this this job description that Lucas Arts was looking for a voiceover director, and it was basically with the advent of CD-ROMs, they realized that their adventure games, which up until kind of that point had been mostly you know text only. But sure. there was now room for, you know, voiceover and actors and being a, a company that was sort of steeped in, in storytelling. It was kind of the next step for them. Yeah. So I uh, put together a resume that was, you know, had, you know, fabricated to. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> a certain degree. And, and, and I had Peter, uh, the executive producer on the cartoon show, write a very glowing uh, re- letter of recommendation. So I sent that in and I got the uh, the interview and they flew me up to the Bay Area. And I had this like marathon, like eight hour interview. And, you know, there, there was uh, sort of, the, you know, Tamlin, who was the hiring manager who who ran the uh, the voiceover department. There was uh, Michael Land, who ran the sound and music department. Um, and then there were various people from production and, and, and the president. And, um, uh, you know, it was kind of for them, it was it was, you know, it, it was it was a, a not a big hire, but it was it was one that it was a new world for them. And sure. with with the exception of Tamlin, you know, nobody really had a lot of experience in it. So they weren't able to see through my bullshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Get it. So um the funny thing was I I I left uh the interview and and uh, went back to LA and I, I was so stressed out. I think I got sick the next day and I was like I bet the really, adrenaline. You know, the adrenaline yeah. Oof. And it was funny because because the the company that I was working for was basically kind of struggling and and uh, Paul was going to have to let me go, and he literally he called me in and he's like look I look I just can't you know I, I don't have the work so I, I you know how about I just call you when I need you and I was like oh my god I don't I don't already don't make enough money and and sure I'll never it was a crazy day my dad was in town and um I, I there was a guy in, a, in in an office building next door to us and he's like hey can you can you come over to help me. I have this marble bathroom countertop that we need to lift up onto the, onto the thing. And can you, and and one of his guys, you know, can, can you help me out? So I went down to the office, went over to Warren's house. We lifted the, the slab in place and all of a sudden the phone rings and it was, uh, it was Warren's phone. And somehow the office was, my dad had called the office and the, the office was patching my dad through to, to Warren. And so Warren's like, it's for you. And I, I'm like hello, and it, it's my and my dad's on the other end, but the the line was breaking up, and he's he's like, it's me, Lucas, old 
and I was like, <laughs> oh my god! I was like, and I was like, Lucas, Lucas, call! Like, I, I, I gotta go. <laughs> so we, we, we raced back to the office, and you know, I, I, uh, I made it home, but I needed. We, we, we basically the, the timing of me calling them back. We had to go to lunch, and of all places, we found ourselves in uh, Mel's diner. Amazing. And in Mel's, we're sitting there, and and in in a Mel in Mel's di- diner, there's pictures of George shooting American graffiti. And there was this one picture on the wall right next to us. And George is sitting behind the camera that's attached to a car. And he's looking at the photographer and he has one hand out. You can't see it on Zoom there. Uh-huh. He has one hand out. And he, it's the dad, my dad was like, you know, is he saying welcome or is he saying sorry? Ooh. And we were just like, oh God. I love at the, this. At, at, that, at that moment, the, the server comes over and we sort of tell her the story and about my imminent, you know, yeah. call that I'm about to return. <laughs> and she was like, well, if it doesn't work out, we do have an opening as a dishwasher. <laughs> 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 it's like oh god so um anyway we go we go home and my dad is like he's like i'm gonna go down to there there was a pool in the middle of of the apartment complex and he's like i'm gonna go down to the pool give you give you you know some peace and quiet so i get on the phone and i call uh tamlin and uh, she's like you know we want to offer you the job and and she's like you know can you start in two weeks and i was like oh uh yeah let let, let me check my calendar and i'm like (laughs) Dramatic you pause, know, dramatic uh, pause. Dr- exactly. And then, and then I was Sift like, Sift through yeah, pages yeah. on the phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that, that, that works out. And, you know, I, I was, I was, I'm, I'm actually unclear exactly how, whether it was 24, whether it was 25, but I, at that point in time, I think it was making 400 bucks a week. So I was sure. broke. And um, I think on the form I had said, oh, I'll, you know, I'll take $30,000. <laughs> and Tamlin's like, okay, she's well. I see on the form that you're, you're you know, you're, you're, you've said thirty thousand dollars. Well, the job pays fifty. And I, th- I think it was fifty, cool. fifty-five. I don't quite remember. And I was like, oh, oh great, that's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I can work with that. I think maybe. Let me check. <laughs> so two weeks later, I was up in in uh, Marin County, which is where uh, Lucas Arts was based at the time, and they put me up in a hotel for I think a, a month. I think you know, Ooh. which which gave me time to find find an apartment and and yeah, that was the that was the beginning of of the or how the how the Ooh. you know the beginning of the Lucas Arts advent, adventure happened. Were you nervous? Mm. Yeah, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was gonna say you lied. <laughs> So I, yeah, no, I, I, although, you know, it's funny, I, um, like for, 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 I'd say the first four years, I, I avoided telling people how old I was Good um, for you. Because, because, because it was one of those things where if they really thought it through, they'd be like, hang on a second, you're 24, 25. How, there's no yeah. animation. How 15 years experience. <laughs> no, there's no animation company going to allow you direct uh, 52 episodes of, of right. you know, <laughs> whatever uh, i mean i never claimed that i did, directed 52 episodes or something but but it was but you also um, did not wink uh, yeah, exactly <laughs> so you know it's it's the old irish gift of the gab it definitely yeah it definitely helps but no no, no uh, you know nobody i never never got sort of sussed out but i but i do remember working with uh, he it was really gracious but on on the first real full project that i worked on was a thing called the dig which was an adventure game Mm-hmm. Um, that was a Steven Spielberg idea that he, he, I think he realized it was too expensive to make at the time into a, into a, mm-hmm. a, a movie or a show. And so he was like, Hey George, I think this might work as a game. And so we, we hired Robert Patrick for the, the, the main nice. character. And I'm sure Robert came in and was like, looking at me thinking, <laughs> what have I just walked into? And His Terminator <laughs> screen sees right yeah, through all of you. <laughs> totally. <laughs> But Robert was Robert was amazing, and and um, he uh, he helped me, you know, navigate that that first project. And and uh, but it was funny, like in in the, in those days, the script would get printed out of the tool and like the the, the game oh, engine, and so yeah. you would be in all the scripts were broken up by location and then by okay. character. So in 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 Robert's Robert's character was called Boston Low. So we were in in the shuttle. Robert, the first five pages of the shuttle would be lines for robert 
And then the next, you know, few pages would be lines for one of the other characters. And, and so there was no context. Oh, and so I, I would be like fanning the, pic, the the script pages between my fingers so I could flick back and forth between between Boston Lowe and, and Brink or, you know, whoever the other character was. And I remember coming out of the out of that project and was talking to uh, the editors uh, and was like, you know, it's like we cannot do this again and 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 so they they the editors then kind of started working on on importing scripts into a database and that uh, database yeah. would then turn everything into a essentially sort of a, a more theatrical based format you know for the script so yeah but that's my long-winded way of saying i think robert was the guy He's yeah like, this guy doesn't know <laughs> shit <laughs> right. i know a fellow bullshitter <laughs> <laughs> exactly wow that's that's pretty cool. Did you ever have those moments where like you're saying you're a kid, you're playing video games, you're like, oh, who doesn't want to be Han Solo? And then you're at the place where Han Solo was birthed, essentially working on video games. Like how many of those like, I can't believe this is real. Did you have? That happened a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, when I, when I was eight or nine, you know, back in, in, you know, the late seventies, I remember my old neighbor, Kevin, he had this cool tree in his backyard and the, and the two of us used to sit in the tree pretending that we were Han and Luke yeah. and, uh, and that we were in the Falcon. And, and so to kind of, you know, go from that to, you know, have, I remember I had Star Wars on, on VHS and I, I think I probably yeah. wore, wore that thing out as a kid um, to then spending, you know, I, I mean, you know, now I'm a freelance director, but I still work, Mm -hmm. you know on a lot of star wars projects but like lucas arts was you know everything for me really i mean it, yeah. it, it it set me it set me up in my career you know it's it's lucasfilm role was like lucas arts lucasfilm the whole the overall organization were always amazing you know to me while while i was there I met my wife there there you go you know so it's it's you know, I, I, I suppose I still have those moments, you know, that, that, yeah. that it's, it, it's different now than it was at the beginning. But I mean, in the, it's funny because in the early days, we actually didn't do a lot of Star Wars projects. We did a lot of original titles, you know, things like Monkey Island or Grim Fandango or, you know, whatever. It wasn't until kind of the consoles, like maybe PlayStation 2 era when, when, the, when the, the cost of making games went up, we started to kind of look more at, at Star Wars because it was more of a sure bet. Sure. Um, I'd say more than anything, though, once the company moved into the Presidio and you were uh -huh. walk, walking down the halls and you would just see all these star, you know, oh yeah, just images or statues or pieces of art or whatever, then then you're like, holy crap, you know? Yeah, like that's the real map painting from the end of Die Hard. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow how lo how long did it take before you started thinking you knew what you were doing? Uh didn't take that long. Um, That's good. Uh, I, I'd say, you know, probably by the time I did did Monkey Island, the third Monkey, the first Monkey Island with VO. Yeah. I'd say by then I was like, you know, because I, I, then I was like in playing the game, you know, to figure it out, you know, a lot about sort of, you know, game development. Sure. Um, we we had figured out how to, how to theatrical format its scripts. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd, I'd gone through a lot of auditions at that point. So sure. I worked with, you know, a lot of actors. So by that point in time, I I, I was comfortable. So it didn't take too long. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that your dad is the one that's like, just go to L.A. You can figure it out. And then he's there for the call. Like, what are the yeah. universal oh, like, odds? It was actually the funniest part. I actually forgot forgot about this. So I, so I got off the phone with the hiring manager. At that point in time, my dad smoked. I opened the door. And uh, he was down by the pool and he was he was in the process of lighting a new cigarette off the butt of the old oh. one. And, <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and, and he 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 senses movement out of the corner of his eye, pulls the cigarettes away from his mouth, looks up and just sort of stares at me and is is, is like, what happened? Yeah. And I I kind of I kind of gave him the Roman Emperor sideways <laughs> sideways thumb. Yes. And when I turned when I turned it up, he he dropped the cigarettes and put his put his both hands to his face, uh, just in relief. And yeah. You know it was it, it was the stress was just as strong for him as it was as it was for me. So I bet. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a good moment. <laughs> oh, what a special thing to have happened! Like, yeah. just, what are the odds? 
you know, like that he would be in town at this time. He'd be doing these things like, oh, I love stuff like that. Yeah, it's so yeah, cool. It <laughs> and you got in like LucasArts. I mean, you're talking about Obi-Wan. You're talking about Jedi Outcast. You're talking about Bounty Hunter. Like I, I was born in 91. So this was like the golden age where I was like a teenager when these games are coming out. So you were making these things for me. Yeah. And like yeah. what a, did you did you were you kind of left to your own devices or like was George involved at all with what you guys were doing or how did that work? Yeah, I mean in those in those early days the teams uh you know kind of just did did their own thing. Yeah. Um the the only time I ever really remember there being sort of a significant amount of George involvement was in The Force Unleashed. And, gotcha. And and in that it was the sense that Hayden had uh Hayden Blackman, who was the 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 um sort of what we would call the project leader on on sure. on the games. Hayden had done his script and had it had been submitted to George that's at, at some point in time, and there, there some feedback had been given. And then closer to we were probably like maybe three quarters of the way through production, and 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 then then I think there was there were more George meetings. But other than that project, you know, prior to that, I don't I don't I don't think there was a huge amount of involvement. Um, the, the teams kind of did their own thing, and then, you know, there's there's a lot. There, the organization has a lot of. Um, checks and balances to, sure. to make sure that, that, you know, the, the right things are being made and, and the right, the lore is intact. You know, sure. Uh, Leland is the, the keeper uh-huh. of the, holoc- the keeper of oh, the yeah. holocron and, and, you know, everything gets run through, yeah. <laughs> through, through that department to make sure that everything is, is copacetic. So, you know, and, and as I said, in the, in the early, in the early days, you know, there were a lot of original, you know, IP being created um mm-hmm. but then yeah I mean to, to your point in, in your era you know there was some of those games were internally developed some of them were externally developed regardless of of the internally developed games versus the externally developed we as, as sort of the casting and directing on the casting and directing side of things and on the music and sound design side we worked on everything oh, okay. um, so so we we worked on all this all those externally developed titles as well so you know whether whether it was knights of the old republic um or is it to your point jedi outcast or any of those games yeah we, we were hands-on on on all of those um so. that's cool i i will say knights of the old republic my favorite video game of all time nice it's that's the that's the gift that the gift that keeps on giving it's yeah. you know we did we did nice deal republic one two yep. and then obviously there's we, we're still working on star wars uh the old republic the yeah sorry, the, the mmo so um it keeps going you guys did a good job it's great i literally have it on my computer now because i have a mac and they like had it through steam or whatever and like i still play it it's just yeah there's is it true that you're the reason there's like a full voice cast in that game versus subtitle dialogue yeah, the, so that the, how'd that happen? What what had happened was prior to that game, Bioware had with you know the Baldur's Gate games, and uh, you know they had recorded like I don't know exactly what the percentages were, you know were, but but let's say let's say five to ten percent of the dialogue got recorded where you you would meet meet an NPC and the NPC might deliver the first line of of dialogue, but then after that it was text, sure. and that was that was the that was the original plan for Knights of the Old Republic. But, you know, internally at Lucas, we were used to voicing 100%, you know, all of our games and all of the adventure yeah. games. And and I forget exactly, like maybe it was Monkey 3 or Monkey 4 or whatever. So we just come off of doing, you know, a game that had, you know, 4,000 lines of dialogue in it. And <laughs> when we when we met with uh, the, the Bioware production team, um, I just sort of said, why don't we record everything and they were they were like wait what you can do that and and and, and <laughs> oh, i was like can you, know, you know i was like look if, as long as you have the room on the disc yeah we'll take care we'll take care of the production and the and the, and the talent costs you know when it was when the time came you know they delivered the scripts and we you know went through the whole process of casting and and, and recording and and uh so yeah so that that's how knights of the old republic ended up being fully voiced um, and then, and then, of course, after that, Bioware were like, "Okay, we have to do this with all of our, yeah, <laughs> you know, games moving forward." And you know, they they've they've done you know stellar work, you know, over the years on Mass Effect and and, and whatnot. So, yeah, Bio- Bioware's uh, I'm a big fan of of Bioware and their games, and they're they're a great you know a great company. Yeah, that's so cool. It's also how I first became introduced to our mutual friend Jen Hale. Mm. Just 
incredible, incredible person. She is. Yeah, we've, Jen and I, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, maybe would it be just 2000? So we would have, maybe like maybe 1999 started Ooh. recording. It, I forget exactly. It's it's all it all, all the the timelines all blur. Oh yeah, for sure. So, but yeah, so we we've, we've known each other almost for, you know, it's almost close to twenty five years now. Dude, yeah. and how how long did you work on Knights of the Republic? Because now games take ye- like Red Dead Two took five years to make. Yeah, you know what? I don't I don't remember. I mean, we we sure. recorded. It was forever ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I, I remember meeting with the team, us having that conversation, and then. A, months and months and months going by before scripts or, or or auditions like it could have been six months later that we maybe started to do auditions it was a significant amount of time so yeah I don't I don't know how long it took him to make that but I mean certainly from a recording standpoint I'd say we probably recorded for like eight weeks dude you know it was it was it was a long for, for a then, lot of was, dialogue it's a lot of dialogue for especially for back then yeah 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 it was definitely somewhere around there Whew. Yeah, and a lot of that time was with Jen because she yeah. Was, uh, yeah, she's Bastila. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to do anything different from the first to the second one? Uh, no. I I, I think I'm trying to think, not really. I mean, with the second one, I had help. Uh, so on the, first, on the first one, it was just me, but on the second one, we had a internal director who who worked with me, Paul Will Beckman, and um, Will uh, did a big chunk of it, and I did a, a chunk. So I I went to London for a period and, and did some of the stuff in London and will did you know a lot of you know all the la stuff so um so we kind of you know did you know i think he probably did three quarters of it maybe and 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 i did the remaining chunk but but um but the process was was pretty much the same i I think i think the urgency was maybe a little bit more like it it may have had a shorter sure timeline maybe so or schedule so i think there. I sort of have it in my head. There was maybe a little bit more pressure to get it done, but usually how sequels work. So <laughs> yeah, right. The first one and the second one's got to be as good or better. You're like, oh, yeah, what's yeah. the first one. What's the thing? It's like that you have your entire life leading up to the moment where you write your first novel, but then your second one is right behind and it's totally the whole thing. Yep. It's Ooh. that, that happen, happens a lot. You you mentioned Force Unleashed though. Was that was that where mocap kind of came in? Because that had Sam Witwer's face on the character. Yeah. Was this around the same time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny because that was that, that was a point in time that actually almost left Lucas Arts, where I kind of wanted to get involved in doing more performance capture because Rockstar had started doing it, but we we really weren't doing it internally. And I had a call from from a pro- producer offering me a role on on a externally developed like like a, like a, a project. Sure. But I was gonna I was gonna have to leave, and I decided you know what maybe now's the time. And so I handed in my letter of resignation. And Ooh, like scary. Two days later, all of a sudden, this guy comes into my office and he's like, "Hey, you're the person to talk to about casting, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Hey, I want to do I want to do performance capture and and mo- mocap and and I was like, oh, shit." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Perfect timing, pal. <laughs> so I. I, I chatted with him as soon as he left the office. I marched down to see Blair, who's the head of human resources. I was like, Blair, um, I think I want to stay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I may have been hasty. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, so yeah, so I stayed. And so we were, you know, so we, yeah, we, so we did the first part we did, we did, with, we were working with ILM and we did, um, you know, face scans, you know, for likeness capture. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, it's funny because with at that time with ILM, um, the sort of mocap part of the business was um, run by this genius called Mike Saunders, and he everything that Mike did was like just next level. He 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 was ultimately trying to move mo- motion capture, performance capture onto the set. Whoa. So how do I how do I do this in a in a real world environment, which is ultimately what it, what he was doing with with um, Pirates of the Caribbean, right? So so. When we first started shooting, we 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 moved all these mocap uh, cameras up into our recording studio, um, because you know just so, so we could get good quality audio because the mocap stage wasn't treated for audio at all, oh. and 
they were using machines that were like, you know, every, everything was like R and D. So everything kept breaking. And, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so you get we, when you push the envelope. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, it was like the, the, one of the machines was, it was in the isolation booth and, and it kept overheating and shutting <laughs> down. And so, so how, how, you know, how much motion capture performance capture actually really ended up in the game. I'm not oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but we tried a lot. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh but yeah for sure sam and natalie and and uh cully's likenesses um uh, are, are definitely in those games and and uh you know it, that was that was the first time we had done it at, at, at lucas arts for sure wow does it feel crazy because like ilm is known and george is known for like pushing the envelope like we can't do this now but if we mess with this in three years this will be able to do the thing we want is it kind of exciting to be on the forefront of like innovation when it comes to like as a gamer, you're seeing these things like it's overheating, but the next one might not. <laughs> right. Do you notice that as you're doing it, you're just like, oh shit, it overheated again. <laughs> yeah, I, my brain doesn't really work that way. I, yeah. I just, I just, I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, looking at people like Mike and uh, Sanders and just like, oh my god, this guy's a genius, so, you know, or like, like yeah. I'm always, a, you know, it's 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 always, I never feel like I'm not I'm not the person innovating. It's the, it's the people right. that are, that are around. You get to see you know. the geniuses. <laughs> yeah yeah Yeah. exactly and um you know ilm is is you know it was always been like a special place and you know yeah amazing work and and um you know george used to call it ilm as stands for i love money yeah (laughs) (laughs) because because i I think every every penny of of profit just went into r&d to kind of keep the (laughs) the wheel turning that's right. Keep continue to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. keep the needle keep the needle moving. I guess is the the right phrase. Yeah. So, did it change how you did your job? Like, because technology has leaps and bounds so fast since then. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the te- you know, vo- like with voiceover, um, hasn't really changed a lot. You know, now some teams do have tools like dialogue tools where you can, if if the li- a line has been recorded and edited, you can play it as a feeder for oh. um, an actor, which is, which is really great. That and helps. Helpful. Yeah. You know, cause it, it, you know, that way the actor's got something to play off of and, 100%. Um, you know, um, you know, in the absence of that, I'll often read along with an actor just to kind of help them, cool. give them, you know, give them something depending on who they are. Some, some actors are like, no, Dara, please don't. Read yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're acting, your acting ability is a distraction, not, <laughs> not, not a, a help. Um, <laughs> So, so there, there, there are some cool tools like that. Um, but you know, it, it, obviously it's, it's changed with more and more performance capture happening. Sure. Um, so, you know, like that's, that's been, I suppose that's been the big change and, and, and how, you know, from a gameplay standpoint, you can just blend seamlessly from a, a cinematic into gameplay and, yeah. and um, which, which is really cool. And obviously it's, it's changed in the old days, all cinematics, it would be, you know, we'd be recording voiceover and, and the file we get to the animators the animators would animate and then moving forward a little further forward sometimes well the animators like can we have reference cameras and so you'd give them you know reference cameras of the vo session Mm -hmm. um but the actors you know sometimes they would do a facial performance because that was their style and sometimes they wouldn't you know so so sometimes those reference cameras you know would be helpful sometimes not whereas now you're on stage and you're building sets and and yeah captured everything yeah, and you have five, six actors on set at a time. You've got stunt crew. Um, it's it, it, it's a whole different world, you know. It's it's yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of fun for sure. From an acting standpoint, it, it has its own unique challenges, and in, in in that, you got to bring your your imagination to the set, uh, mm-hmm. and that's it's easy for some people, and it's, and it's challenging for others. You know, there there are definitely some actors who are used to being on set and having uh, not just the actors but the world around them. Yeah. Where, whereas when you're in the volume, it's like you may have something that's that represents a car, but then the building's not there. Right. This barrel is a horse. Yeah. So yeah. so that that can be that can be difficult for some. So but but it's it's definitely a fun process for sure. Is there a learning curve going from like a booth to like a mocap set, like for you? For me, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, th- th- there is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, you know, it's it, it, the weird thing about it is when you're shooting, you know, you at the end of the day, the the sort of cinematographer can put the camera anywhere. Sure. Um, that that's kind of the beauty the beauty of it. But 
um, sometimes you kind of have to, you know, make, make some decisions in terms of like how you set people up and, and right. where, where, where you think the camera is going to be, uh -huh. because that, that can definitely impact the performance. Cause, cause there, there might be moments where you know that the camera is going to be at a certain angle and, and you want the actor to give a, give a particular kind of look or something. Sure. Um, so yeah, you do, you do have to kind of, kind of come at it from a, a, a different a different standpoint but it's much more challenging but it's also just much more rewarding as well yeah you know? that's how it so, goes right high risk high reward kind of thing yeah like like when when i did the the remake of uh mafia which was yeah. i forget what year that was but uh we did two weeks in november and then the following year we went january through april so it was it was like wow like almost there, there may have been a, a gap here or there for a week, but it, it was basically sure. four four months of shooting every day. Whoa! And like when you go back and you look at the game, and you're like, oh wow, there's like three and a half hours of this. <laughs> you realize, <laughs> oh, that's why we were Got shooting it. for for. <laughs> we uh, made a movie. <laughs> we made a movie. We made a long. We made a long movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's that part of it's you know you know really rewarding and and uh, and not, not every project is is totally. You know, extensive but um I, I just it's funny i just finished like two days ago i just finished playing uh the dead space remake Ooh, and yeah. um that was you know i think we i think with that we shot i think six weeks total and we, we did like a week and then we go away and then we come back and you know so sure. so it was it was uh but in total it was six weeks but that was a really fun like fun you know just a fun project i i i've never been a real horror sure uh, person but boy that was a, that project that'll was get you fun and, and i i just as i said i just finished playing it and and just the game is like it just the game it looks great it's yeah just scary as all get out and the jump scares are they're, oh yeah they're brilliant yeah the team did, did an amazing job something about confined spaces you're just like yeah. oh no you can't get away <laughs> that's why alien works so well exactly go no it's on the ship totally so so much fun how cool was it to play uh, Padawan Jaredin? You played a Padawan in the Old Republic. How cool was that? Oh, did I? God, I, you know, it, it's funny. On, on, um, yeah. Every, every once in a while, you'll 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 finish with a, with a project, and you'll be like, oh shit, there's like this game. That, you know, we're we're a few months out from launch, and there's there's oh, like, there's, <laughs> there's like there's like we Somebody's forgot to we, plug the hole. We forgot to yeah. There's a hole here that needs to be plugged, and and <laughs> um, there there's there's. I, I for, I forget the you know the, yeah. the, the the characters, but was it it was like a year or two ago there was there was somehow there was a guy live streaming a playthrough on Knights of the Old Republic, and I was I think I was training for a, for a, an Ironman event, so I was on the bike trainer, and I thought oh let me check let me let, while while I'm sitting here <laughs> let me let me let me check this out. <laughs> And like when I when I play that game now, I, I cringe. And, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, couple, a couple of reasons why. The first one is uh, right as the game begins, the ship is crashing, uh -huh. and the the player is having a a, a conversation with uh, I forget the character's name, but it's his, basically his roommate. And the, uh -huh. the the roommate is like, "Hey, um, so and so, and and uh." You know, we we haven't met because we're all, we 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 work different shifts and and <laughs> and, and there's like zero urgency. And, I think you're and so mean, calm. <laughs> meanwhile, the ship is crashing, and there's and he's like he's like having this conversation, and he's, it's like it's just it's, it's like uh, that guy caused the crash, Dara, is what we're figuring I, I, out. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but but then the, during this live playthrough, so so the ship crashes. He gets out. And he's on this on on the first world, mm -hmm. and he he literally walks up to these three guys who are. Th the, they're called the schlubbies they're the three yep. drunks and schlubby number one is this guy and <laughs> it's just like oh my lord it's roll of like, a lifetime terrible it's like <laughs> embarrassing i'm like oh my god how, how how did that happen that's amazing i actually i actually had that ha that, that happen on a on a uh another um arcade there was a star wars uh arcade and um this one's not as bad but um, <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> there's we we, we all had all the actors come in and we'd done everything, but then there was like this PA announcer who's like, you know, the blast doors are you know closed. Oh, yeah. so I was like, okay, I'll just knock that out. And um, <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm at a, a a mini golf place with my kids, 
and I'm like, oh wow, that there's there's the the, the arcades uh, machine, the, the new one. So I sit down, I put my quarters in. The first person you hear me with the with the bar stores are up. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> That's not, when you know you've made it, Dara. <laughs> not by design. It's not by design. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you get there. It's there. <laughs> and then you just got to ride that wave. You'd be like, kids, kids, listen. Listen close. Listen. Who's that sound like? Huh? Huh? <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> you right. You start doing the impressions. <laughs> my, my guys, are they're so unimpressed. They're, they're like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey check, check this out. Just check, check out this, this game that I worked on. They're like, they're like, is is it Fortnite? No, I'm not, yeah. no, I'm not interested. Um, <laughs> That's the recompense of children, I suppose. Like, yeah, these cool things. Like, yeah, it's not like our version no. of the cool thing. Keeps you humble. No. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Did you when you? Because I know you worked on Sekiro as well, which mm. Nosh told me you championed him, which is amazing. What a dude! What a he's, dude! Uh, he's amazing. Was it tough not getting distracted by how handsome he is? Or did you just <laughs> He is. He, he's. He's. <laughs> well, you know, at, at that point, yes, very much so. But yeah. now, now I'm used to him because uh, yeah. we've worked on a few things. But the glow um, wore off a little. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's 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 funny because we actually just started watching. It's so why I almost sent him a text the other day. We were at home looking for a show to to, to watch, and the kids somehow they were like, "Let's put on SWAT," and I don't oh, know. We, I, I don't know if it's like four or five episodes in. There he is. There he is. He's, 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 you know, he's, he's on screen. I'm like, Oh my God, it's no sheer. And, 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 and actually, so the funny, the funny, my kids actually know no sheer because there was one time I was down in LA and I had like one of those like muscle, like sore muscle in the back, you know, back shoulder blade. Oh yeah. And no sheer comes in and we're chatting and I'm just like, Oh God, I got the sore muscle. And he's like, hold on. And he goes into his bag and he pulls out this like gun looking thing with, oh, with, yeah. like, a, with like a round it. Uh-huh, and, that like ball thing. Yeah. He he goes, he stands behind me, puts his 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 uh arm, his forearm on my chest, and then he jams that thing into my back. <laughs> and I swear to God, I thought I was gonna pass out. Like like it was <laughs> it was just like so <laughs> so so when he came on when he came on screen and I was like, it's no sheer. My kids were like. Is that the guy who like 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 you know jammed you in the back and you know with 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 the with the That's how they know him. <laughs> yeah, that's how they know him. Oh and I was like, it's, it was like that's the guy. That's the yeah. guy. <laughs> he's the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he yeah, he 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 was he's amazing and and oh, man, um, can do everything. Yeah, and we we uh yeah, we did Sekiro and and Is it tough doing a dub? Because Sekiro is one of those that like was Japanese, like Final Fantasy, like it was Japanese and a whole thing first, and then we dubbed it here. Yeah, yeah you know it, it. So with the in-game stuff, we we weren't really locked into um, timing. Oh, cool! Um, if, if memory serves me correctly. Uh-huh. Um, but then obviously with cinematics, yeah, we there there's there's there, there's timing that needs to be matched. Some actors are just really good at it, and yeah. you know, and, and and they just like come in and just boom. Um, you know, like like, if it were me, I'd be there all day long trying to get, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. like five five lines done. Where some people yeah. like they'll they'll they just have a, have a, a knack and they just do they they do it once, do it again. Half the time they get it on the second take, and then and then if it's not on the second take, they get it on the third, and you're like, oh my yeah, God. you know, and and then engineers will just you know maybe just do a little tweaking and uh-huh. it's, it's done. So I don't, I don't remember it being, being that challenging, but it was the, the, you know, the funniest thing is finish that game. I don't remember what I rolled onto, but I was like super busy. I, just the, up until now, like the last sort of few years have just been like mental. Yeah. And I ran into no sheer and he's like, congratulations. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, <laughs> Sekiro. I'm like, I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And he's like, come on, dude, you know. And I was like, well, well I don't know. And he's like, it's game of the year. I'm like, it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on the so, next game of the year, no? <laughs> yeah, so so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, it was, it was, that was a fun, it was a fun project for sure. Yeah, it, it worked. You did good. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that like you're doing, if they don't get it on the first or second take, they get it on the third. Do you ever cast someone who you're like, they have it here, but like, I feel like, I can tweak them to get them to where I want to be. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, so now as a freelancer, now when you're going through an audition process, you always, you know, you, you, you bring people in, you work, you work with the, with, you know, with the team to make sure everybody's happy and, and, you know, they like all, you know, all the actors, but, but even like back in the day when, when at Lucas, when, if I wanted to just cast it and, and not even go through an audition process, I, I would never do that. I would, I would always go out there and see, you know, do, do due diligence and see who, you know, who, else, who is the right person for this role. And if that's somebody, if that's somebody new, then so be it, you know? And, 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 and I think I learned that, I learned that on Monkey Island because, I think with with Monkey Island, when we were casting the character Guybrush Threepwood, it was down to there, there was Bob Bergen, who is who is a very much legend. a known entity and a legend, and then there was Dominic Armato, and who was nineteen. Yeah, and, and I remember sitting with the, the project leaders um, on Monkey Island, and I was kind of like maybe I was leaning towards the the safer bet. And with with Bob and sure. they were like oh, I don't know we feel we feel really good about the young guy and we went with the young guy and, and it worked you know D- D- Dominic was 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 amazing and and so I think that at that point in time it was it was a good learning lesson you know it's like never never be afraid of the the person who doesn't have the experience but yeah you know if, if as long as you feel good about it you know that being said you know when when uh, you know when I'm working with teams and we're going through auditions I, you know I'll, I'll always tell tell them it's like look listen to the audition or look at the audition and and if you like what you see you, you need to realize that that's what you're going to get um because because yeah. the, that, you know most actors well not most actors but but not every actor can be a chameleon like daniel day lewis like like sure some actors you can just kind of nudge five ten percent in, in one direction or the other and until we get somebody in we don't we won't know right what you know where they're at so if you like what you see that assume that that's what you're going to get don't don't think that you're going to get something else oh interesting because you you, you might not right that sounds like a lesson learned the hard way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. picking up a little something there, Dar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'll you definitely have 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 that. You're like, oh well, you know, it's, it's, it, we'll just we'll get them in and they'll be great. And you know, and you know, or or you'll you'll. I've definitely had situations where there's people, you know, actors that I haven't worked with. You listen to an audition, but you've never had a chance to do a call back with them or anything. And and then mm-hmm. you come in, and then you're like, oh. Um, that was a lucky take <laughs> sure, <yeah. laughs> because, because, it, you know, the, the audition is, is, is one set, it, it's one performance. Yeah. It's, it's one glimpse at their instinct in a moment in time. Yes. And for an actor, instinct is a huge thing. And, and, and yeah. so you definitely, I've definitely had situations where you get in to do the work and then their instinct isn't exactly what you thought it was. And, sure. and, and so, and so then they become as, as a director the actor becomes less predictable. And so you're, you're, you're trying, there's something that you want and it's maybe not uh, what, what yeah. they're doing. So you're trying to now all of a sudden you're trying to fit a, a round peg into a square hole. Yeah. So then kind of on the other, on the flip side of that coin, when you're working on like midnight suns, I mean, you would talk about like an all-star cast of just Titans in the industry. I mean, like how is it working on a project like that with so many characters, but the caliber of cast is just like, is it like when you're back with Tress McDaniels, like just push the button? We know what we're okay. doing. <laughs> push, push the button and go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you know, like the the you know, that was a funny project because Two K called me and they were like, "Oh yeah, it was the team that 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 handled all the talent and and they weren't quite sure how much time I was going to be needed on the project." And so they were like, "Yeah, it'll probably, it'll probably just be a couple of weeks." And uh, those those couple of weeks turned into into like. A year, a year. <laughs> it's like, that's it's very like, different. Oh my God. Yeah, like like the game was like massive, massive. huge, and you know, but yeah, like when when you're in there and 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 you've got a, a cast like that, you know, there's there's God, there's so many I can't even my brain is like I can't even remember. But it's but everyone, whoever it's everyone, loves, yeah, it's them, <laughs> and and uh, you know, J- Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Brian Brian Bloom, Josh Keaton, you know, there's there's just there's so many, and Elizabeth, oh, yeah. Elizabeth Grulion and 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 Matt Mercer, got Yuri back as Spider Man, Yuri, awesome. oh my god, yeah, and I like, adore that man. He's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. They make your life so much easier, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it, 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 at that point, it's it's just kind of like go, yeah, and then <laughs> and then I'm I'm just going A B B B, yeah. B. yeah. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. No, definitely. It's it's uh, when when you're 
you know, certain projects when you've got that, that level of cast, it's, it's like, you know, the work just, they, they just go into, into, into gear and you just kick back and, you know, just make sure everything is kind of, you set up the bumpers on the lane just to be like, yeah, you're, you're like a, you're like a pilot, but the ships, the, the plane's on autopilot. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> um, you're the safeguard just in case you yeah. get a little too crazy. You're like, just over here exactly exactly <laughs> yeah but then yeah you know n- n- you know it's not always that way every then once in a while sure you know, you're you know you're working you're working hard so yeah dude how did you end up writing on the battlefront reboot because that's different <laughs> one of these it's... is not like the others no so that actually was, it was a funny funny thing because i was down in la and i was with i was with bioware and the dice team were just sort of starting their their process to to kind of put something together for a presentation to Lucasfilm, and they were because they're all under the EA umbrella. Dice were talking to Bioware, and because Bioware had so much experience, you know, work dealing with Star Wars and, and whatnot. And the Bioware team were like, "Hey, what this is while we were in the studio, they're like, hey, we just got a script. Can you can you just take a look at it to make sure that every, everything is cool because they're going to go in front of Lucasfilm with this." So I looked at it and I was like uh wait you've got echo base but you're on tatooine i'm like you can't do that and, and <laughs> my man so, like, excuse me <laughs> I, I just, and then, like i gave him some notes and yeah. <laughs> a few weeks later the, the, one of the guys from dice was like hey can you work with us on 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 the script and i was i, I was pretty quiet at the time and i was like yeah sure and so all of a sudden he sends over an excel doc and it's empty and, and i'm like <laughs> i'm like what is what what i think help is different for me and you yeah, right and so um so or yeah ordinarily i wouldn't i wouldn't go anywhere near that but it, it, it was it was quiet at the time and so i sure. i um i you know i i did it and you know just 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 the ai because there was no there was no story mode in that first one it was just multiplayer so i just right. did, i just did all the the uh, you know the, like a lot of the ai barks and then cool. we we uh i i have this unusual uh skill set that comes up regularly which is uh apparently i'm i'm the the go-to person when it comes to translating english into hatties so, <laughs> hey, so, get so, it. <laughs> so i i um we we had to have, have a whole bunch of aliens and then i had to translate the the english stuff into into hatties and and yeah and then we we recorded uh recorded all of that <laughs> for battle for the battlefront reboot yeah think about you as a kid at this point like a Star Wars fan wanting to be Han Solo in a tree to translating into Huddies and official Star Wars games. Like what? What? I know, What's your it's, life, it's, dude? It's <laughs> believe me, the translating Huddies probably sounds a lot more glamorous than it really is. <laughs> hey, you're amongst friends. I think that's awesome. My my, uh, my wife hates it because there was there was a point in time where we were on vacation and uh, we we were in we were in Turks and Caicos and the kids were probably probably three and five. So there were a handful. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden I had to, there was an emergency and I had to translate some Hatties. And so, so from, <laughs> oh, from like no. nine until 12 every morning, I was like sitting out by the pool, translating Hatties. <laughs> Meanwhile, my wife is chasing the kids around and yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, so. I like to believe there's a reality where your children were yelled at for misbehaving in Hatties. Like your <laughs> brains got, their wires got crossed for a second. Totally. Is yes. there, when you think back on all like the cool things you've done so far, is there a project that stands out as like, I'm really proud of this one? Um, I know, right? I'm asking you to pick a, your children, but there's gotta, there's gotta be a couple. There's, I think, well, yeah, I think there's a few like, yeah. like, um, Grim Fandango, Classic. um, for sure. You know, I think Mon- Monkey, you know, the Monkey 3, which was the first, first voice monkey uh i think that one too i I didn't quite realize at the time that the game was as popular as as as, uh as it was Um, sure so monkey three grim fandango um you know knights of the old republic um uh for sure playing the schlubby Um, i get it yeah that's right uh (laughs) the force unleashed Mm -hmm. but then you know like the you know the newer games um I, uh, mafia uh yeah you know uh, just because it was it was i mean you know that was a great cast uh oh, you yeah. know to, to spend four months with with, with that cast they you know they, they were they were they were amazing um and 
that team is is uh, is just really really good. I mean, I, I'd worked with them on on Mafia Mafia Three. I did the DLC, um, yeah, the the PCAP and the VO. Um, you know, so so yeah, the, the the Mafia stuff is 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 definitely a favorite. Um, but then yeah, again, as as I mentioned, I, I really enjoyed uh, Dead Space as well, and 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 the yeah. The, the, the motive team are 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 amazing and and um hopefully i get a, an opportunity to work with them again because because they're, they're 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 just a great team they're, they're they're just really really nice sure makes a huge difference for sure oh yeah 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 definitely that's half definitely. of it it, it is <laughs> it definitely is it maybe a little is. more <laughs> yeah yeah for sure is there something you haven't done yet that like you want to do is there anything on your bucket list left as far as work or not work why not um Likewise, uh, I don't know. I, like y- you know, I, I like right now. I, you know, I, I kind of consider myself. Uh, and this is just the phase of the phase of life that that we're in. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's the last three years have been insanely busy. Um, yeah. But, but I, st- I still kind of sort of jokingly refer to myself as a, as a full-time soccer dad, part-time director. Hey, um, there you go. You know, so, um, correct priorities. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and my, 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 my wife has a, has a very busy, busy job. So it's, it's just with our schedules, it's a lot easier for me to kind of mm-hmm. be the person who, who can focus on the kids when, when, you know, the time is there. Totally. Um, uh, cause she's like on zoom, like, you know, eight hours a day. Uh, so right now, no, but, but I, you know, at some point, I mean, well, like, I, you know, I want to continue to to do more performance capture just because, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun, but, you know, I could see maybe down the road doing something live action, um, Ooh, you know, uh, I'd watch that. You know, we'll we'll, we'll see. It, 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 I, I would, requ- it would require, yeah, it would require more time. You know, sure, and, sure, and more dedication. But, um, you know, why not? Yeah. Um, and uh, I love that yeah, on on a, on a personal level. Uh, I don't know. I you, you know what I I I just uh, I just you know I get a lot of satisfaction just hanging with the kids and and cool. you know doing doing that stuff and driving them around. I'm a glorified sure yeah. uber driver yeah. <laughs> being a dad and whatnot yeah yeah and it's it's like they're they're fortunately their their soccer schedules are 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 aligning right now but okay. you know that okay. that's a that's a it's a lot of you know like my son he this morning he was doing 8 30 to 10 30 and then uh tonight they're doing like i think one of them is at five the other is at 5 30 and then they Ooh. finish it at uh let's see 5 30 would be uh, seven. You know they'll be done at seven. So I'll be back and forth between here and the fe- <laughs> here in the field, and uh, you know, and that and that just gets you know that's just going to get more more uh-huh. intense. You know now now my my daughter's going into into high school. And, but then I guess in a few years she'll be driving. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> she drive herself <laughs> exactly. So then at this point now with technology progressing the way it's been. Do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get into the kind of interactive space or voiceover space, either from an actor's perspective or a director's perspective? Yeah, it's funny. I, I had a call recently with an agent who was looking to uh, get into directing. And the advice that I would give directors would be to get yourself in-house. Um, Ooh, nice. Because until you're in-house and you know... Like you, you can certainly be a director and not be in house, uh, sure. but it's definitely a lot easier when you know how things get made and 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 then and then you you understand the the transition from cinematics into in game. I, I there there was a a job that I ended up going in on where there was a director who did the PCAP. Mm-hmm. And then there, then there were there was a director who did the VO, and there was a tonal difference between uh... one one and the other. So even even though some of the actors were the same, there was still a there was still a disconnect between those transitions. And so that kind of thing you're you're is is more easily uh, learned when you're in house. And and then you you also realize 
especially when it comes to game AI and how AI lines trigger and, uh-huh. you know, sort of the complexities around those, like w- when they trigger, how they trigger, you know, that stuff can can determine how intense uh, a line would be. Oh, yeah. Um, a, 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 another, this is a, a real world example. I was working on a game last year and th- that's out now. Sure. And, um, you know, we were, we were recording different lines and what in the script there was like two levels of combat and okay. there was sort of a, a light combat and a medium combat. And a lot of those light combats, you, you think, okay, so there's the odd, you know, there's, there's gunfire, but it's not, not a lot. And so it's, you know, let, let's say the line is, you know, he's over there. You, you think that that's a, that's an appropriate level for light combat, but then in, in, in how that line gets used in game, you're in there and you're trying to tag an enemy so that your teammate knows who it is that you're, you're, you're tagging. And in my instance, the character that I was tagging was on the other side of a wall who was like 10 feet from me. And so I'm trying to be stealthy and quiet. And then all of a sudden the line is like, he's over there. And it's like, (laughs) quiet. (laughs) He's kind of nowhere here. (laughs) Simmer down. Um, So there's, there's, there's a lot of knowledge to be, you know, learned about implementation and sure. performance levels that you can't learn it unless you are in-house or you have the opportunity to play a game that you worked on two years before and then you realize. But but in, but but it, but if you go back and work with that same client, you're you're in terms of being able to to help them adjust their sort of tool set and and the implementation. Yeah. You know, those are those are systems that take lots of time to to to, uh, to get in. So so really, what 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 you might need to do is have stealth lines, light combat lines, right. medium combat lines, heavy combat lines, and um, as you, all of a sudden your line counts start, yeah, and your, v, your VO <laughs> budget starts to do that. So um, so anyway, so so this is an awfully long winded way of saying if you're if you're a new want to be you know young director, try and find yourself in house somewhere. Um, and, and very likely that may not be starting out as, as, uh, you know, a director, but maybe it's a, maybe it's a voice implementation person, whatever it is you you need to do to get your foot in the door. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that's what, that's what I would say for, for, uh, you know, directors, for actors, um, it's, you know, just be an actor. Don't focus on being a voiceover actor. Yeah. Be just be an actor, whether that's, you know theater on camera voiceover everything Mm -hmm. just do it all do improv you know because because the the, there there was you know there definitely was at the beginning of the of the my career we would hire voiceover actors and or or we would hire actors who had voiceover agents it's probably the better way sure yeah (laughs) and um access and and, and, right and, and, and a lot of those actors uh could do characters and some of them were some of them were animation and some of them were you know on camera but they you know had enough about them to 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 know that they were you know good at voiceover and but you know now with you know the entire skill set is needed so yeah whether it's you know voiceover or being able to go on on a you know performance capture shoot um and and you know act like you're on set or or, Mm -hmm. or on stage you know on on a theater stage it's it's all the same and but then you know things like improv are just super helpful for whether it's just confidence in in a performer or or you know comedy or you know whatnot it's it, it's yeah it's do it all you know don't 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 pigeonhole yourself you know because there's there's a, there's a lot of actors that I, that I know that you know their their career will have started doing voiceover but now all of a sudden they're you know they're on a show or or yeah you know or or vice versa people who who, who started out doing shows and you know now now they're you know they're they're, making, they're, they're just doing so much voiceover that they they're able to kind of walk away from that, you know. But, yeah. but there are, that's I, I guess the, the thing is that there are very few actors that have the luxury of being like pigeonholing themselves. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so it's it's you just have to be open to everything. That makes the best artist I've found. Yeah. Have a life. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> totally. And and um yeah, just 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 do it all. And um yeah. and spend spend time this is kind of my, my, my sort of a, a pet th- thing 
yeah you know put put the cell phone down and, and yes, watch if, 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 if you're in an airport put the cell phone down and watch people just just watch them go back and forth yeah and, and, and just and just you'll just see like sort of a rich tapestry of of characters that you can kind of yeah uh draw from and you know it's 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 true there's just a lot to be gained by watching people <laughs> oh yeah no that that's the that's the whole thing right it's like you're studying humanity to be more human you know it's like that game where like you're sitting on a bench and watching people and you're giving voices to what they're saying mm-hmm. you know, that's totally. that's not weird at all I, I for sure don't do that all the time. <laughs> Dude, that that's solid advice though. I like the sort of practicality of it of like, yeah, just be a human being, but get in yeah. as a director, know all the parts, because then you are more useful across the board more. Makes a lot of sense, Dara. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And just like that, you survived. Right. Hey, Look we at made you. It. We made it. Awesome. <laughs> this was so fun. Like, yeah. I, we have enough mutual friends where I knew I was gonna like you beforehand, but this was great. Yeah, no, this was, this was fun. It was good, good to good to chat, and uh, I see uh, Carrie Fisher there behind you. You know, and, I, I, got a, and, you I got know, a, I got yeah, a couple things. You know, some stuff up there. Now, yeah. now, normally I ask people where can I where can people find you online, but they can't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't like social media, and so I, I so I, I, I don't do Same. it. It's, it, it's just, it's, it's. Uh, I just find it's there's there's a level of noise. I mean, it has its place, but there's just a, a level of noise that, that um, I, I just can't deal with. So what what I tell people is um, you can always find me on LinkedIn. It's the one so, sort of social media thing that I yeah. that, that I utilize. <laughs> and the, the reason I always push people in that direction is is because my inbox is is generally a train wreck. <laughs> and so what what happens is if, if somebody sends me a message on on LinkedIn, I may not see it for a month. <laughs> but what 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 will happen is at some point I'll I'll be sitting in my inbox sifting through emails and and I'll get one of those emails from LinkedIn saying somebody's looking at your profile. And I'll be like, okay, let's see who's looking at my profile. Yeah. And so then I'll click <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, nobody's looking at my profile. There's, you know, it was like, right. I don't know who that is. And, <laughs> uh, but then I'll be like, oh, look, there's a message here from somebody. And so then I'll, I'll, uh, you know, LinkedIn messages, I always do respond to at some point in time, but it may, it may not necessarily be timely. It gets put on the board. <laughs> it, exactly. Exactly. I love that. It's the social network. That's the least social is the one. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and there, yeah, there's a reason for that. There's, there's a reason for that. I love it. I love it. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show and stay up to date on new episodes, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, recent projects, and other stuff I'm up to. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. As speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to pick you up some sweet gear. And if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases while you're at it, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Ben, Chris, Daryl, Daz, and Victor. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.